Hi everyone, it's Pastor Penn Clark. Jesus said, it's impossible, but that offenses come. They are a fact of life in this world. They happen to everybody, they happen to him. There's no way to avoid them. Uh, it's, it happens in the best churches, it happens among our best people, best friends, best leaders. Offenses are a fact of life. And the purpose of an offense is to make you hesitant, uh, cause you to be uh, doubtful, double-minded, cause you to be uh, reluctant, cause you to shut down that openness. If you compare that with what J Jesus was saying about little children, he was saying that uh, little children are, are open and receptive and woe to the person who does something to cause that to shut down cause them to become uh, reluctant to explore, reluctant to express their faith or express spirituality. It's just natural for children to believe. It's natural for children to be trusting and to do something, to have something happen to shut that down. Uh, Jesus said, woe to that man who offends someone who's open and trusting and causes that to shut down. Uh, it's so serious. He said it'd be better for them if they took a millstone and wrapped it around their neck and threw themselves in the ocean. And uh, uh, that's a graphic picture. Not everyone gets that picture today because not everyone's seen a millstone, but there was a time when every village in America had a mill and the uh, stones that had ground smooth would be thrown out and be uh, along the roadside. You'd see them everywhere. And um, it's a graphic picture. But today, I, I don't think we quite get it. It's dulled it a little bit. What if he said something this, like this today? It'd be better for you who shut down the openness of a, uh, a, either a child or a young believer. It'd be better for you to take a tractor trailer tire and run a chain through it and wrap the other end of the chain around your neck and throw it over an overpass. That's, that's how serious he takes it. And so it happens. Offenses happen. And... Um, that there's almost like two levels to it. One is that ultimately it's the enemy who's wanting to shut us down. He wants us to be tentative. He doesn't want us to explore by faith. And so he's behind it, but he uses people like pawns. And probably the best example of it, one of the clearest examples of it, is Jesus was telling the disciples how he was going to be going up to Jerusalem. Uh, the elders or the pastors of the of the community were going to arrest him, uh, uh, abuse him, spit on him, reject him, and kill him. And Peter stepped in front of Jesus and turned him around and said, uh, not so, this is not going to happen. Jesus looked at Peter but spoke to the devil and said, you are an offense to me. Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. And, and it's just one of those examples of someone who's close to us, someone who has proximity to us, who's being momentarily used by the devil to offend us. And Jesus didn't reject him to the point where he didn't say, you're off the team, you're no longer in my life. Uh, he understood that offenses happen. The problem with offenses is once you've been, once mistrust has, has occurred, it's really hard to start that up. For some people, it's so much work that they don't even bother to believe the Lord to get it restarted. But what happens is we become guarded. And um, uh, when we've been offended by a person or a church or a place, uh, anytime we have an association with that person or with that place, it causes us to shut down again. And if the enemy knows that he what it takes to shut you down. You can believe this, that he'll keep pushing that button. He'll keep you shut down. Because Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you can't enter into the kingdom. He's not saying you can't go to heaven, He's, but there's a lot to the kingdom before we get to heaven. It's where our spiritual life is. It's where the power is. It's where uh, the gifts are. It's where the, our purposes uh, lie. And uh, he's trying to keep us out of being used by the Lord, keep us away from people, keep us away, keep us from being under authority or going to church. He just knows if we can go back to that, navigate that again, build trust again, uh, we'll grow again. So he doesn't want that to happen. 
Part of his objective is to get us uh, to be hesitant or double-minded. For a double-minded man can't really receive from the Lord. It's not like the Lord won't give it to him. He's just unable to receive. So this whole thing of, of, of rebuilding trust, uh, it's not easy to do. What happens is when we're hurt, when we're offended, when we're duped, we feel duped and disillusioned, disappointed, uh, it becomes part of our, our discernment mechanism, a, a grid that we have in our heart, that we get a sense of something else being like that, where we've been hurt, where we've been disillusioned. Uh, we, our guard goes up again. And uh, that discernment, we, we feel, boy, we need that. We, we need it for ourselves. We need it to protect or to warn other people of, of uh, teaching or behavior, or something that's going to potentially hurt them. So our discernment, trumps everything and, and we actually rely on our, our discernment more than anything but if we're not careful that discernment can keep us out of things and, and and can act like a millstone around our own neck that holds us back that keeps us from moving forward i'm not saying we should check our head at the door and i'm not saying we should totally dis, uh, dismiss discernment i think we do that to our peril but sometimes we need to dial back and say, no, I'm going to explore. This is new theology. I'm going, to, I'm going to be open to it. This is a new spiritual experience. I'm going to be open to it. I want to keep moving forward. I want to keep growing. I, want to, uh, I can't do this without some risk. And that takes childlike faith. And that's what God wants to see restored. And our goal for the rest of our life is to cultivate childlike, childlike faith, childlike openness at the risk of being disillusioned and disappointed again. Jesus knows that there are offenses. He knows how we're going to react to them. So does the enemy. But uh, let's not let them, let's not allow them such a uh, place in our lives that we don't continue to grow and move forward. We're going to need to trust the Lord. Amen.